Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? It's thump, 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 eh, eh. Bad boys for life. Yeah, I'm cool. Now, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rakeem Reviews. Today, I'm talking about Bad Boys for Life. Uh, Bad Boys for Life is the third movie. You think they would have made this Bad Boys four, right? And they definitely set up a sequel at the end of this movie. Um, off the bat, spoilers in this movie review. I always have spoilers in my movies review from the beginning to the end. Uh, if you've been here before, act like you've been here before. If you're new, welcome. I'll be spoiling shit. Let's get into Bad Boys. This is going to be a very simple review, right? I'm not going to get too nitty gritty into this movie. It stars Martin Lawrence and uh, Will Smith. They are these two aged up cops. You know, it takes place 25 years after the original film, which came out like 1994, 1995, something like that. Um, Marcus is Martin and Mike is Will Smith. I'm gonna mess that up in this video. Mike, Marcus, Martin, Marcus, Mark and Martin, Mike. The M's is insane. William, there's an M in his name too, damn. And W is just an M upside down, neither here nor there. <laughs> um, they play these buddy cops, it's a buddy cop movie, but this one has a spin on it. They're aged up, they're mature. They've lived a life of success being these buddy cops. They're bad boys, right? It's no good cop, bad cop, it's bad cop, bad cop. And this time, they mean business. No, but they're these buddy cops that um, get called to action. At the end of their careers, Will Smith is desperately trying to hang on to what career he has left. But you can also tell that just like his partner, Marcus, he's getting, uh, Martin Lawrence, he's getting up there in age. They do this race thing and he proves to not be as perfect uh, the M, what, you, what, what is he, they call him the, uh, the, the, the man who, uh, the impenetrable man or something like that because he's never been shot or something. Um, so he gets shot in this movie, he fills the holes, posts it on YouTube, you know how things go. Uh, it's a very modern movie. Um, and uh, puts him out of commission, six, seven months. During this time, Martin Lawrence's character finally retires. He had been wanting to retire, but Will Smith has been hanging on to the life. <sighs> know what that's like uh, uh, but uh, Will Smith has been hanging on to the life so he, he recovers he doesn't die and there's this hitman that's trying to get him by this like witch lady and uh, it's got a little bit of elements of magic in there because it's like is she magic I mean we know she's not really it's just like some prayers and uh, curses and voodoo type hexes and stuff um, but they believe that she has this like witch I don't know I don't know or something but that seems to here nor there the villain of this movie is very memorable um, not to mention that she sicks her son to assassinate all these people who are involved in this case that made Mike a hero one thing I thought the movie was going to do because Mike has such a strong relationship with Marcus I thought the movie would torture Marcus a little bit more from the villain's perspective just to get at the heartstrings of Mike. It was a little bit of an untapped opportunity there because yes Mike has all these things that he loves like in this movie the um, the police chief who from, who's from the first couple movies he dies in this one he gets shot in their attempt to assassinate Mike you know Mike has to feel bad about that um, but they could have done a little bit more with the relationship between Mike and Marcus as the villains use that relationship against him because she really wanted to hurt him. And th this movie is a movie all about relationships. Um, it's about the relationship between uh, the old guard and the new guard. We see that with the ammo cops. It's about the relationships between the two, Mike and Marcus. Um, it's a little bit, not necessarily as much as like some of the other movies were, the relationship when you, like between work and not work. No, it's definitely that. But I guess in this case, what I specifically mean is between Martin Lawrence and working and building and retiring and kind of existing in his own life with his wife and his new granddaughter oh he's got the new grandbaby um but the movie is really good i definitely recommend that you check it out 
Um, one of the things that they did in this movie, as I said earlier in the review, they really, really, really set up that it's going to be a sequel by the end. There's some after credit scenes where the villain in the movie, who turns out to be Will Smith's son, if I haven't said that already, um, Will Smith goes to him in the prison and is, you know, it's very much a vulture in prison at the end of Spider-Man uh, Far From Home or Homecoming. Um, Will Smith goes to him and is like, hey, how would you like a chance to, you know, pay back your debt to society? So I'm thinking like there's going to be like a spin-off buddy cop movie maybe with this new young guy um, and he was killing it with the martial arts you know I was like oh that's pretty good the choreography in this movie was good this one wasn't directed by Michael Bay like the first couple were I don't really know who directed this one I can't remember um, but they're probably in the description below I definitely recommend you guys all check out Bad Boys for Life. I might do a heroic analysis of this. I'm definitely going to talk about this movie a little bit more in depth on my podcast. Check that out. It comes out every Wednesday or so. I'm really inconsistent with it because I don't get paid to do this. Watch the movie Bad Boys for Life, everybody. Have a good one. Enjoy your MLK Day.